Hello folks, I'm back with another video for my Scimitar MV6, a project I did many years ago now. Uh, I'm just updating to get it uh, a little more use out of it. Uh, today I'm just going to talk about the exhausts, a little bit, uh, the manifolds I made, and uh, go into a little detail on the clutch, the problem I've got, and uh, what I'm going to do about it. Might even have a little look at the back of the engine, some of the modifications I did, which uh, obviously I won't be able to see again before it goes back in. So exhaust manifolds there, I made these based on some old manifolds I had on the Essex engine before I took it out. Um, so they, I did some calculations in fact, and I forget the name of the chap who wrote the book, but uh, you can calculate the optimum diameter uh, of those primary tubes and the optimum length for uh, performance. I think I based it around 6,900 RPM or something like that, just a fraction under the red line. Don't quote me there, that might be the red line. Anyway, it was the calculations were correct at the time. <laughs> These are 27 inch primary length pipes, and I believe they're one and a half inch. Um, all stainless steel, though you wouldn't believe it now, would you? These things here, this one has uh, Simons, I think, and that one's Midge Performance, the rear the rear one. Both straight through silencers. Uh, they've, they're have they great, there's no signs, uh, or the tubing, no signs of rust anywhere really. That's I think it's 304 stainless steel. Um, yeah, they're, they're brilliant, they're just way too noisy, so I've had to put um, silencers in the back of it. I'll show you that quickly. This is a, um, a removable piece I made. You can see the two bolts there holding uh, the internals together, and that bolt there, you just undo that and you can take it out, so you've got full straight through performance and noise, and it's incredibly noisy. Uh, when you're revving, revving it hard, it's just noisy. It's not offensive, but when you're down at 2,000, I think 2,500, somewhere like that, the, the resonance is absurd. It's really quite painful, so I I, I had to make these as a, as a quick fix, really, and I've been driving around with that quick fix for years. It still makes absolutely bucket loads of power, but if you can see in there, it's uh, it's it's really quite shocking. I've put some perforated pipe in there, um, bent over so it blocks up the tube, and behind it is some stainless steel kitchen scourers. Um, I think you might be able to see light through it, actually, there. But it, it seems not to hurt performance too much, which is incredible, really. It still makes bucket loads of power. Um, I, I can't tell when it's in or out, that, that, those plugs on either side. But as with... Um, any tuning, I think, the, the more the closer you get to the cylinder, the more important uh, it is, the more beneficial it is. This is right at the back. Of course, it's increasing back pressure slightly, but uh, all the power is made in the head, in those improvements I showed you in the last video, and in these um, manifolds, which are nothing like the log manifolds that were fitted on it. So, yeah, 27 inch primaries. Now, this is, I said, stainless steel. It's some cheap grade beginning with a four, I forget what it is, but obviously it's um, it's not like in the heat too much. It's, it's suffering a little, but it's not too bad. These are nice stainless steel uh, parts, got those off eBay. Um, yeah, no expensive bending equipment here. It's really almost embarrassing to show you the, the welds, but it was a cut and shut job. Cut sort of five or ten degrees out at a time, bend the tube shut. Uh, so it's, in, it's intact on this edge, you know. And then welded it around with my pigeon poo welder. Uh, so while it looks shocking, I made great efforts to ensure the inside of it is far smoother than one, than how it looks on the outside. And then just made the three into one collectors there. You can see, um, which again has shocking welding on it. But it's all sealed and it all works incredibly well. So I'm very pleased. Uh, and it's quite hidden away. There's a, a splash guard I've made out of aluminium here, which hides all of this. Uh, and I think you can see under the car, there's some um, aluminium I've had to put on there to protect the fiberglass as um, when we were on the rolling road mapping this car it became very hot and stinky in there and smoky and it was um, the floor was sort of the resin was drying out and burning so yeah interesting they must have been glowing pretty hot so as with a lot on this car really uh, it doesn't look great but it does work well <laughs> so I'm, I'm really pleased with these they they took two weeks each side to make ever such a slow process but they work ever so well um, yeah, so then onto this clutch. I've just got the engine out this morning, and it slips. The clutch slips if you do a little burnout. Sometimes the tyres are, uh, are producing the smell, and sometimes it's the clutch. So it used to have a dual mass flywheel on it. Uh, you can see now here. This is a lovely um, lightweight flywheel. It weighs around about a third of the weight of the dual masser, so it really lets that engine rev very freely and. Um, opens up performance hugely in first gear, uh, noticeably in second, and then, um, you know, of course the effect tails off the, the higher the gear you're in, but, wow, it makes a difference in first. It's uh, it's quite incredible. We drove the car, the Omega, quite a bit, me and my brother, before I um, before I took the engine out to come in the scimitar. So. Yeah, so this is a fantastic piece, but, of course, a dual-mass flywheel 
has springs in it, so it does not require springs in the clutch. This is a 240mm clutch that comes with the Dualmaster flywheel. Obviously it fits on here, this is um, the correct part for it, it's, des it's designed to fit. But we now have no springs in the driveline. We've got a gearbox that's rated for, I believe it's 300 newton meters. it's the R3 something or other, I forget. There we go, R25, R28. Oh, okay, maybe it's not the good one. Well, I believe those numbers refer to hundreds of newton meters, so 280 newton meters. The engine on Dyno, we figured it was now producing 350, so it's already marginal uh, at best. So to put in a clutch with no springs, the shock loading that goes through the gearbox is, is greatly in, in, increased. At the time, all I could find which would match the number of splines in this clutch was this one. I have no idea what it's off now. Um, but while that one is 240 millimetres, this one it was only 228. And therein lies the problem. The springs are fine, it reduces the loading on the gearbox, but it's not big enough. You can see there, if I let it droop, you can see the, uh, the huge um, size difference. Uh, of course this one will move, but not anywhere near as much. So that is clearly the right size. And this is way too small. So I've, I've actually done 13,000 miles in it, but only in the last sort of 500 or 1,000 miles I've, I've noticed this is beginning to slip. I was expecting to see um, the top of these rivets um, had been scraped, but they're not. Now, there is a couple of heat spots on the flywheel, particularly bad on there, but that's fine. We can go ahead with, it, with that again. Um, so I have found after much searching and bothering people on eBay with questions, that uh, this clutch here, I don't know what it's from, a diesel van is, I think, is the right size. It's exactly the same, 239 millimeters, near enough 240. Uh, and this is the first time I've offered it up. But there she goes. It's a really great size. It's exactly the same as the, the correct flywheel, but it's got these lovely springs in it, which will protect the gearbox. Uh, it also came with a pressure plate and I don't actually know if this will fit I don't necessarily need it but uh, if it does fit all the better so I'll give that a go that might very well fit actually let's have a look uh, perhaps it won't I can't see where the a locating uh... oh there we go there's a locating no I don't think it will I could drill those out I'll have to have a look at that off video but it'd be nice to fit a new pressure plate, but it's not necessary. I, I can carry on with this one. So that's the clutch issue. So I'll whip that together, uh, align the clutch, pop the gearbox back on, and really the engine's ready to go back in. Oh, here's another interesting problem I found with this gearbox. It's a lovely gearbox. It's the Omega gearbox, and of course it has a... Um, the, the stick doesn't come out the top of the box like it does on more older boxes. There's a, there's a linkage on the back, so it can be shortened, which is fantastic, because you can put the gearbox, uh, the gear stick, wherever you like. It's got a breather here at the back, uh, as with any axle or anything, you know, when there's um, heat generated, as there is in a gearbox, air expands and it needs to come out, otherwise it'll blow the seal, uh, which I'm very pleased to see is perfectly intact. There's no oil leaking at all. But what I found was this um, combination, the light car, the very light flywheel, the performance in first gear was um, it's just fantastic, and the acceleration is so... Uh, so much that the oil swills to the very back of the gearbox and it started pouring out of the breather <laughs> So I was regularly getting oil stains on the floor uh, shortly after I'd accelerated hard um, So the solution I came up with was to block it up putting a piece of um, Brake hose in here uh, It's sort of sealed it up there and, and now the breather entrance is there So it still has uh, it can still expand and contract and air can come in and out but of course, when accelerating, the, the oil swirls to the back. Uh, it won't get all the way up this tube. So um, that stopped the problem. I was quite pleased with that little fix. I didn't know what I was going to do for a short time, but that's okay. And then lastly, not quite so interestingly, is the back of the engine. It had a huge uh, water manifold thing here, which would have fouled the bulkhead, so I did a lot of work. Oh yeah, and the breather. The, um, I was just talking about breathers. There's another one for the engine there. Of course, the breathers from the engine go up. Uh, through these sort of snorkels here up to the throttle body and get breathed in so there's no emissions except for those out of the exhaust as I'm sure you know uh, but that had to be greatly reduced so I've made a, a very much smaller version there with all the breathers on it looks like there's a hint of an oil leak from somewhere but um, that's not enough to worry about for now 
So that's the water manifold, which was enormous as well. It came way out here, I think, and then uh, came around the side of the engine and forward. It does the same thing here, but much more tightly. And again, some absolutely shocking welding that I'm really quite embarrassed to show. But as with everything, it works fine. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. And then the last thing here is on top of the um, X30 XE engine, the V6 here, you get the oil cooler, uh, the pipes. There's a, there's a huge channel in there with um, a lot of water in it, a lot of coolant in it. Uh, and that is filled with an oil cooler. They have a tendency to, to let go of the seals on that and leak. So to get around that, I got rid of it, made a whole plate here, skimmed it on the lathe, and um, it's quite a neat job. I should have painted it, obviously, but uh, that seems to be holding the coolant in nicely. And then instead, I've taken those coolant pipes at the side of the block there. They go up, and uh, at the moment, they're sat on the engine, but of course, they go to a Mokul oil thermostatic uh, oil cooler. Well, thermostat, sorry, and then down to I think it's a 50 row uh, oil cooler there, uh, air to oil, of course, not water to oil. So, the great benefit of a water to oil cooler, like there was in the block, is it heats the oil up quickly with the coolant, which is great. But uh, I've lost that advantage, but of course, I don't drive it very hard until it's all warmed up. So, there you go, folks, another little video of uh, all this gubbins basically, and what I can't show you when the engine is back in. So, I'll take advantage and do that now. Well, I hope the uh, handful of you that are watching are enjoying it. I'll keep going with these videos because uh, I won't be working on this car for too much longer once it's done and pushed out the garage. I'm on to more Land Rover shaped projects, as you can see there, uh, for a neighbour of ours. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying it. If you've watched this, thank you very much for watching.